an industry cornerstone is calling for your help. There's a new design gold mine in town. And can Runway's tools really be used for VFX? It's Motion Mondays. Grab a coffee. But first, some trivia. Do you know how to pronounce this classic After Effects effect? Stick around until the end to learn the correct way to say it and uncover a bit of mathematical history. Motion designer Matthias Ling is shaking up the showreel game with a brilliant question. Why can't a reel be nine by 16? As more clients demand vertical content for social media, Matthias created a nine by 16 reel to showcase his expertise. It's a savvy move that signals specialization to potential clients. While his portfolio still features plenty of 16 by nine work, this vertical reel sets him apart in a crowded field. It's reminiscent of our recent podcast with Connor Hankel, who's built a lucrative career by niching down into sports graphics. Matthias's approach could be a smart way to position yourself as the go-to expert for social media animations. But what do you think about 9x16 reels. Do you love them? You hate them? Let us know in the comments. Another day, another AI controversy. Engadget reports that NVIDIA's AI team allegedly scraped YouTube and Netflix videos without permission to develop commercial AI projects. Leaked internal chats suggest that employees knew it was questionable, but instructions came from the top. Content creators like Marquez Brownlee aren't thrilled, no surprise. The debate gets interesting when comparing it to, say, Google's Street View project. Some argue there's no difference, while others point out that streets aren't copyrighted like videos. It's a complex issue that highlights the ongoing ethical challenges in AI development. To me, this definitely feels pretty icky, and it's part of the larger conversation about how AI learns and what constitutes fair use. Expect to see more legal battles and debates, and we'll keep you posted on this story. Time for a quick tip inspired by Brady Erickson from Texture Labs. This clever technique uses color science to create really vibrant overlays. For obvious reasons, I'll use this photo of Fred Durst as an example. Start by adding a black and white adjustment layer, then add a gradient map adjustment. The key is using colors that appear brighter on monitors, yellow, cyan, and magenta. Brady explains why these colors are actually physically brighter on monitors in his excellent video on this, so check that out for more details. The short version is that these colors require two of the three colors which make up each pixel to be at full brightness versus only one color for red, green, and blue. I set my gradient from black to a bright cyan, then added a midpoint with a slightly bluer version, which perceptually looks darker. I also turned the brightness down just a bit on it. Then use blend if settings to desaturate darker areas, making the bright parts pop even more. It's a deceptively simple trick that yields cool results and is trickier than it looks to get right. Check out Brady's full video for a deeper dive and some presets he's given away. Give it a shot and let us know what you think in the comments. Half Res, the Chicago Motion Design Conference, has announced some speakers and tickets are now on sale. This year's event on September 20th features a new format with morning workshops led by stellar artists like our own EJ Hassan Fratz, Patrick Foley, and Laundry co-founder PJ Richardson. The afternoon brings main stage talks, including our friend Jonathan Winbush and Duolingo's Colin Likes. Tickets are on sale now at halfres.com. I've been to Half Res before and it's one hell of a party. So if you're looking for an excuse to visit Chicago and immerse yourself in MoGraph goodness, this is definitely it. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to learn, network, and get inspired. Art of the title, a cornerstone of the motion design industry, recently faced challenges due to rising hosting costs from Vimeo. Lola Landikich, the site's editor-in-chief, called on the community for help. The response was overwhelming. They quickly hit their initial $5,000 goal. But as someone who runs a company, I know how fast that money can disappear. School Motion has made a donation, and we encourage everyone who's benefited from this incredible resource to chip in what they can. Art of the Title has been showcasing and breaking down the best in title design for years, and it deserves our support. Check the show notes for the donation link and help keep this invaluable site thriving. It's time to celebrate our School of Motion student of the week, Charbel Makluf. This Lebanese designer currently working at Hybrid Experience recently completed the Expedition 100 Style Frames project for Design Bootcamp. The assignment challenged students to create storyboard frames for a fictional NASA Mars mission, combining graphic elements, typography, and NASA imagery. Charbel knocked it out of the park with two distinct looks, both eminently animatable. His use of tiny type, and raise your hand if you love tiny type, and clever compositions show real promise. It's always fascinating to see how different artists approach the same brief, and Charbel's work stands out. So keep crushing it in Design Bootcamp, Charbel. We can't wait to see what you create next. Stability AI, the folks behind Stable Diffusion, have introduced Stable Fast 3D, a tool that transforms a single image into a 3D asset in half a second. That's crazy. While the geometry, to put it mildly, isn't perfect, it could be useful for concepting or background elements that don't need rigging. 
Looking at the examples on their site, I'm guessing about 75% of the models won't be suitable for professional use as is, but for quick mockups or design elements, it shows promise. Being open source, you can try it now on platforms like Hugging Face. This tech demonstrates the rapid progress in AI-assisted 3D generation, even if it's not quite ready for prime time. Give it a spin and let us know if you see potential uses in your workflow. The Rive train just keeps rolling. Intercom, a major player in the customer support platform space, has adopted Rive and become a vocal advocate. In a recent blog post, Jared Gay from Intercom's creative studio team explains their switch from Lottie to Rive. The benefits, smaller file sizes, easier implementation, and a more intuitive workflow. Jared describes using Lottie as playing 3D chess. All of my decisions were tied to the pain I was anticipating. It's kind of brutal. Rive solved many of their pain points and made experimentation much easier. Check out the blog post for more details. This adoption by another large tech company signals Rive's growing importance in the interactive animation space. If you haven't tried Rive yet, now is the time and keep an eye out for our upcoming Rive course. Let me introduce you to Worship Studio, a Toronto-based design powerhouse founded by Nicholas Girard and Raphael Ruiz. These guys are absolute killers when it comes to typography. Their work is the kind that you want to download and dissect frame by frame to understand how they pulled off those mind-bending effects. Even simple type treatments feel alive and handcrafted in their capable hands. Whether it's intricate animations or clever static designs, Worship consistently delivers work that pushes the boundaries of what's possible with type. If you're looking for inspiration or you just want to level up your typography game, head to worship.studio. I guarantee you're going to find something that blows your mind and sparks new ideas for your next project. Runway's Gen 3 AI video model has been making waves and pissing people off. See last week's video for more on that. But now they're showcasing its potential for visual effects. In a recent video, they demonstrate how to use the tool to create VFX shots combined with real footage. Intrigued, I decided to try it myself, attempting to add a monster Mon Chi Chi to a golf course shot. I mean, why not? The process was quite involved. I started with a stock footage shot from Artlist, then created a still frame with a composited monster in Photoshop. I fed this into Runway, experimenting with their new feature that lets you specify if your image should be the first or the last frame of the generation. And despite my best efforts to prompt for a locked off shot, Runway often added its own camera movement. After generating numerous versions, some truly nightmare fuel, I settled on one that had some interesting tree movement as the monster lumbered through the scene. Then came the real work in After Effects. I had to stabilize the runway footage, track the original plate, and use a combination of rotoscoping techniques to blend the monster into the scene. This included using the roto brush, luma mats, and manual masking to handle tricky areas like the golfer and the tree line. I only spent 45 minutes or so on this and the results are pretty squirrely. I'd need much more time to clean things up if I really wanted a clean result. The process highlighted both the potential and current limitations of AI and VFX. While Runway can generate really interesting elements, it still requires significant expertise in post-production work to create a usable shot. The final result, while fun, would still need considerable refinement for professional use. This experiment reminds me of the classic how to draw an owl meme. Step one, draw some circles. Step two, draw the rest of the fucking owl. Similarly, with AI VFX, it's not as simple as step one, generate a monster. Step two, voila, finish shot. It requires planning, technical skill, and a good eye to achieve even basic results. While it's an exciting tool to experiment with, it's not quite ready to replace traditional VFX workflows. However, as the technology improves, it could become a valuable addition to a VFX artist's toolkit. What do you think? Could you see this becoming more useful as the tech evolves? Let us know in the comments. Public.work, powered by Cosmos, is a goldmine for creatives seeking inspiration and assets. This free site is essentially a search engine for public domain content, meaning you can use anything you find for commercial projects without copyright worries. The interface is a joy to use, an endless scrolling map of images that you can explore with AI-powered suggestions for similar content. Whether you're after vintage posters, unique typography, or just general design inspiration, the site is incredible. You can search for specific themes or just browse the endless scroll of fascinating imagery. For designers and artists, this is an invaluable resource that's definitely worth bookmarking. So check it out at public.work and prepare to lose hours exploring. Big news from School Motion, our first animated short film, Metal Heart, drops this Wednesday, August 14th. Directed by our own Arun Rabinowitz using Unreal Engine, it features voice talent from David Hewlett from, among other things, Stargate Atlantis, and the talented Marta Svetek from Five Nights at Freddy's. To celebrate, we're hosting a massive giveaway worth nearly $5,000. Prizes include goodies from Maxon, The Pixel Lab, Artlist, Revision Effects, and more. Two lucky winners will even score a year of our new School of Motion all-access platform. Currently, 
only available to teams of three or more. Head to schoolmotion.com slash metal heart to enter before Wednesday. Don't miss this chance to win some incredible tools and to see what our team has cooked up with metal heart. Maxon's August release is here. The headline feature is 100 new motion graphics templates added to Maxon Studio. I know it's not that cool, but if you're subscribed to Maxon One or Red Giant Tools, you now have access to these capsules, ready to use templates for your projects. This expansion is part of Maxon's strategy to become a comprehensive visual creation company moving beyond just 3D. Maxon Studio, which launched a few months ago, is a slick template engine for After Effects with a growing library of well-designed assets. If you're using Maxon Studio, let us know what you think of these new additions in the comments. Bian Studio recently knocked it out of the park with their Journey to Greatness piece for Meta, featuring Olympic and Paralympic athletes. This fully animated spot incorporates traditional 2D animation with clever 3D trickery and showcases stunning visuals. But what's really exciting is the detailed case study they've shared on their site. It's a goldmine of behind the scenes info from character designs and color choices to compositing breakdowns. You can see how they tackled the challenge of framing for multiple aspect ratios and get a peek at their pencil tests. For anyone interested in the process behind high-end projects like this, this case study is invaluable. So big thanks to Bian for not just doing great work, but for sharing their process and helping elevate the entire industry. As motion design increasingly overlaps with UI and interaction design, it's crucial to expand our inspiration sources. Enter the Game UI Database, a treasure trove featuring UI designs from 1,343 games. Unlike the often homogenized world of web and app design, game UIs tend to lean heavily into their unique visual styles. And this results in a wide array of creative approaches to typography, color, texture, and overall art direction. The database lets you search by game or UI type, making it easy to find specific inspiration. Even if you don't work directly in UI, studying these designs can spark ideas for your motion work, especially as tools like Rive make interactive animation more accessible. So check it out and let us know if you find any gems. And now let's clear up that blur mystery. It's pronounced Gaussian blur, named after German mathematician Carl Frederick Gauss. But why is this 18th century genius tied to our favorite blur effect? Well, Gauss created a mathematical function that produces a bell-shaped curve, which is key to how this blur works. Unlike a box blur, which simply averages pixel colors in a square area, a Gaussian blur weights the center pixel differently than the edges. And this creates a more natural fall off and a smoother, more pleasing blur effect. It's the secret sauce that makes your glows look silky smooth instead of blocky and digital. If you're down for more nerdy details, check out the linked Adobe article explaining the origins of Gaussian Blur or venture into the Intel deep dive on blur algorithms. I must warn you, it's very nerdy. Both are linked in the description and they're perfect for impressing your fellow motion designers at your next meetup. And that is it for this week. Obliterate that subscribe button, please. And then head to schoolmotion.com slash metalheart to enter our giveaway. Keep on rolling. See you next week.